Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of During the Shoot. I am Alec Johnson. Thanks so much for joining me. In this episode, we're going to be in the studio working on a project to copycat the work of Platon. So let's go ahead and get ready to create. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on today's photo of Mason Thielen. Mason is a client of mine, and before Mason and I arrived at the studio, I asked him to review the work of some five photographers who, who I really enjoy. One of the photographers Mason gravitated towards is Platon. Platon's out of England. His website is platonphoto.com. And in particular, uh, the image that Mason really enjoyed was this image of President Putin. And so we decided uh, to set out and uh, copycat, replicate, mimic, use the word, the, any word you want there, uh, the style of Platon. And I, wa I want to say just a few words about the idea of being a copycat, because it seems to me to have a uh, somewhat negative connotation in, in our culture. And I use, I, I behave like a copycat all the time. And uh, it's, it's interesting because artists have been often quoted uh, talking about their uh, influences in their work and where it shows up in their work and when. Uh, yet, yet it seems as if at times, you know, engaging in that kind of beha copycat behavior to develop influences uh, is, is somehow um, intellectually dishonest, I guess. So... Uh, I do it all the time, uh, and, and in particular, when, when I get stuck, if I'm not being particularly productive or excited about my work, I'll go out and connect with somebody else's photography work, and that gets me shooting again because I try to replicate it. And in doing so, I also am trying to learn something and put, put a, put a skill set uh, in my toolbox. And so I think that uh, the power of being a copycat is amazing for us. And I would encourage all of you to, to you know, engage in that behavior. Replicate somebody else's work. Uh, and you will, one, be more productive, and two, you'll build your skill set. And, and in doing all of that, you'll continue to move towards finding your own voice in your work. I don't know if we ever exactly find our voice. I think it's an evolutionary process. It's probably changing all the time. Uh, and so... Being inspired by somebody's work, trying to, to imitate or replicate it, uh, I think is a great behavior to engage in. Uh, it keeps us productive, moving forward, and learning. Enough said about that. Let's go ahead and start deconstructing uh, this image of Putin. And it certainly helps uh, to, to have a video on Platon's site of a Motorola marketing shoot he was on up in Iceland. And so we got to kind of see in that video his lighting setup. And I think he uh, probably in this shot, like he was in the Motorola shot, is using as a key light a single large softbox, a super simple setup here. And there's probably some evidence of that here. You can see this hot spot in uh, his forehead here that very much looks like that's a reflection of the light. And so uh, I, I'm getting the feel of that wraparound light. That's so uh, signature of the of the giant softbox, uh, but then we also have to look at what the shadows are doing to really understand how this is positioned. And so the upper upper cavity of the eye sockets are shadowed, while there's plenty of light and no shadow on the lower side. Uh, there is a shadow on the lower side of the lip, obviously below the nose, and then this incredible shadow in the neck. And all that is telling me that uh, somewhere directly in front of but positioned well above uh, Putin's head is a big soft box that is hitting at a pretty pretty good angle downward on, on the subject. And that's how I think uh, the key light is set up. Uh, the advantage of the soft box and this positioning too, or, or the, one of the features of it, I don't know if it's an advantage, is how we get great light in the mask here and how it falls off towards the edge. In this case, very subtle fall off uh, and transition, which indicates to me probably an ex a very large softbox. Uh, I probably don't have one that large, but that's the deconstruction uh, of of the Putin shot to my estimation. And so I went ahead to uh, setting up to kind of replicate uh, this this lighting s style. Uh, I started with a giant softbox, like I believe uh, Platon was using, and 
I had this softbox extremely close, it's slightly camera right, uh, so I had I actually wanted a little bit of directionality, just a hint of directionality to to the photograph for Mason, um, and a very very close to the to Mason's head. Probably this light, this softbox is is within two and a half feet, two two and a half feet, maybe three feet of of the subject, and that uh, that creates two two advantages for us. First, the closer your, your light is to your subject, the larger that light source becomes relative to your subject. And that increases the softness of the light. Um, second, it, we need less light because it's so close to the subject. And in, in photography, we have a, another effect called specularity. And specularity is not a product or quality of the light source. It is a uh, uh, quality of the subject matter and so by moving it closer we can turn down the output of the light uh, reducing the specularity of the subject. So we have a uh, key light is one big softbox light. Now because of the directionality that I've established with the softbox and you can see the effects of that in a uh, more shadowed left side of his mask uh, and a little bit more open right side, I uh, brought, a, uh, brought a reflector in from the left side very close to Mason and this had a, a subtle effect uh, but it had an effect and so the the relatively little spill off out the side of the softbox was hitting the reflector and coming back in to get some effect I had to have the reflector very close to Mason in fact both the softbox and the reflector are just out of frame here just out of frame and I was able to shoot around them because of my lens choice. So I was uh, shooting with a uh, Canon 70 to 200 millimeter telephoto lens, uh, which allowed me, and, and uh, one, it had a relatively narrow field of view, uh, and two, uh, I had the soft box high enough and positioned just far enough right uh, that I was basically shooting under that corner, uh, right under that corner of the soft box and was out of frame. Uh, so. So those are the two uh, lighting sources. A soft box is a key light and then a fill light based on a reflector. And then the background light here is another strobe light which I had a 30 degree spot grid uh, placed in the reflector. And I had to position that light very carefully. So I wanted to accomplish here was a uh, fairly circular halo and, and background light on the subject matter. Uh, so I brought that spotlight on about a three-foot tripod, uh, or light stand, excuse me, uh, right up to about this height. Mason was sitting, and uh, and that that light is right in here, dead center, and uh, that that kept the angle of incidence of the light fairly flat and low. So it wasn't pointing up, but just a little bit pointing up away, uh, and we got we got the halo we wanted with that effect. The last piece of the setup that's really important is this shoot is the background I used. And so let me say a few things about that. It's a uh, seamless paper and it is neutral gray in color. So I love, love, love shooting with the neutral gray background because Photoshop will do a great job of toning a neutral, neutral gray background. And that gives us an enormous amount of uh, creative control after the shot to work with color and really make the image and finish it in a super dynamic way. So those are the features of the shot here, the Platon shot, the copycat shot uh, we did for uh, my client, Mason Thielen. Hope you enjoyed this, this episode, and we will talk to you again soon.